Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, we're looking at becoming magnetic. Just a disclaimer though, the fundamental most important thing that you need to succeed in becoming likable magnetic is empathy. If you struggle with empathy, that is where you need to start, not here. So how can you become magnetic? Let's break it down first. To who? To who are you becoming magnetic for? Because if it is anyone other than yourself, that is you trying to become likable, you know? And the answer to that is very simple. You just make that person feel like they're the most interesting person in the world, and that person's gonna like you a lot because they feel like the main character. That's the simple answer, but this video is about becoming magnetic. And to me, magnetic means becoming your best version of yourself that you like to see, as well as being likable to those around you all at the same time. So I've compiled five traits that exist in a truly magnetic person. You need likeness, you need substance, you need patience, humility, and presence. Let's go through them. So number one, lightness. You don't drain other people's energies. Okay, I think this is the most beautiful thing because you have to show that you have so much of your own energy that you are rich in energy. You are swimming in it. I find it to be such a subconscious attractive thing when you leave meeting someone and you feel energized, you feel inspired and excited. Whereas there are people that when you leave their presence, you feel so tired, drained, so demotivated. Energy really does rub off on people. So if you come to a gathering or a crowd with good Good, high energy all make people remember you in a very positive light even if you're tired even if you're so exhausted and your socially battery is fully drained you have to fake it till you make it because either you leave early and you don't show that tired side of you because you want to be remembered positively right or because sometimes we depend on other people in order to be able to go home and in those cases I'm telling everyone to fake it till they make it you don't want to make people feel like they're annoying you or that they're a burden to you in that situation that environment because you don't want to make people feel bad about themselves but also by allowing your negative emotions to consume you you are being defeated by your own negative version of the self just push through as much as possible i think that is the least that you can give to people when you are in their presence if your intention is to be magnetic this is what you should probably do next under likeness is humor okay by humor i don't mean that you need to necessarily make jokes but don't take things so seriously you know if you feel bothered by something that someone has said uh maybe it was an insult or just like a really harsh joke learn to dig back at them but tastefully you know in a classy manner where you make light of the situation you know add more light to something that has a lot of weight to it people that take things to heart very frequently very intensely they put a lot of weight and meaning to the words that are delivered to them you know negative ones as in and when you put a lot of weight on these words you collect it and you become very heavy so use humor as a wall or as a shield for insults and words that bother you to bounce back into the person that said them and my final point on likeness is to become a peacemaker so this is outside of situations where someone clearly wants to rant with you gossip with you that's separate what i'm talking about is when people are frustrated and they need to be calmed be a selfless person and don't make them more angry. Don't push them further into that emotion. Just take take them out of it. Of course, you can't solve their issue, but you can temporarily bring them out of it in order to show them the positive light that there is. That is what a magnetic person does. They attract people into their positivity. So another important trait of a magnetic person is substance. They know who they are. They know themselves well. Maybe your task right now is to really get to know yourself. What are your likes? What are your dislikes? What are your stances on life? Figure out what your priorities are in life and go with it. You know, the reason our generation has so many lost identities is because one, we are so easily distracted. Two, our attention spans are like zero. And that just makes us start one thing and drop it and go on to the next, you know, thinking that, oh, maybe this will make me some quick money. Oh, maybe this is something that I enjoy, but you don't fully immerse yourself into it you don't give it 100% chance we really need to fight that because we are becoming so mentally weak we're prioritizing a dopamine rush over hard work over gaining a skill that's going to really benefit us in the long term but enough of the rant my main point is be grounded in certain things that create a strong character of you get to know who you are and that leads on to my next point which is to be curious ask questions you know some people are 
naturally not curious. I find that those people have either stayed in the same environment for many, many years, or they're stuck in their comfort zone because they haven't challenged themselves in any kind of way mentally, physically. If you honestly resonate with not really being super curious, you have to leave the comfort zone that you're currently in in order to become that. And that reminds me to also talk about the difference between being curious and being nosy. You know, magnetic people are curious, non-magnetic people are nosy. There's a huge difference. So when you are nosy, you are boring or kind of annoying the person with your questions. Um, you know, maybe it's something that they already know or it's something that isn't interesting to them, but you're still asking them, right? But being curious is adding value to both parties. It's not something that they'd be bored telling you about. Think about whether the question is just to solely benefit you or is it something that will benefit both people and will spark more interest and engagement. Final point within substance is to become self-aware on how others perceive you and acting accordingly. So I find this to be a very interesting point, RIP to anyone who skipped through this part, but I heard a psychologist speak on a podcast about how most people think that they are self-aware and it's true. You might be aware that you are a very straightforward, direct person. If you can understand that your straightforward and direct traits that you think you have are perceived as others by you being rude, I think that is the more objective self-awareness that most people lack. So in order to gain that level of self-awareness, you have to be super observational of the people in their reactions when you interact with them. So it's super important to remember and collect those observations that you make when you talk to people um, that tell you a little bit about how they perceive you and to apply that to your self-image when you're working on it. And I guess the number one way to be able to achieve that kind of level of self-awareness is the complete removal of the ego and any kind of form of defensiveness. So the third key trait of a magnetic person is patience. When you're having conversations with other people, in order to keep your inner peace, is to have patience and if you don't have any to work on it and yes maybe you've heard the story before maybe you know exactly where they're going with it so in order to be magnetic is to have that little role play of like you have no idea where the story is going right because actually when you think you know where the story is going and you're thinking of a response that you're gonna make i know that it's supernatural for us humans to do that but it's still taking us outside of the present moment so just stay with them with every word that they're saying in the present also, the person sharing a story or just saying their point needs to feel at peace themselves. And in order for them to feel at peace, you need to give them that peace by also having your own peace. You know how frustrating it is to feel like you're being spoken over or feeling like you have to speak over someone when they've asked you the question anyway. It just gets so tiring to have a conversation with that person. And then those people also feel drained from being in your presence. And that goes back to the lightness and the energy that you bring. If you're truly a magnetic person, speaking to you needs to feel effortless and needs to be easy. Fourth trait of a magnetic person is humility. Forget about speaking good about yourself because that is something that other people should do for you, whether that's behind your back, whether that's you know, in front of you. And I think that is the biggest flex that anyone can have. And the only time people are gonna want to say good things about you is when you don't do it for yourself for the purpose of receiving attention. And trait number five, which I touched up on recently, is being present. You know, your presence is super important. You know, when you've just hung out with someone and you guys look at the time and you're like, oh my God, where did the time go? We're gonna be late, let's go. That is when you've had a great or super productive time with someone. And that is because you made them feel super present as well as being present in the moment yourself. Thank you guys so much for watching. I genuinely hope you enjoyed this video. We gained almost 100 subscribers from my previous video and I couldn't be more grateful for every single one of you that subscribed. I love you guys so much and see you in my next video.